Hey guys, yesterday I uploaded this reel to Instagram and already got a few questions on how I put the text behind the subject and the waterfall so I thought why not make a short video today showing you how I do that inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's head into the computer and let me show you how I do it. We're inside DaVinci and as you can see from the clip before, this is the reel that we're working with. I'm just taking the two first clips in the video the one of me walking and the waterfall, and I'm showing you two simple techniques on how you can do this inside of DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing we want is of course some text. So I'm just gonna apply some text here and I think for the sake of this video, we're just gonna call it put text behind. What I usually do is I use buttons and I use the extra bold, at least sometimes. Then I will usually just zoom it up to scale it something like that maybe up towards two maybe this something like that and for the first clip here i think we want it to be a little bit higher so i'm just going to put it up here so that we can see most of the text even though i have my shoulders there and for the second clip i think actually we want to drag it down a little all right so the only thing i have with my clips here already is that i have just color graded them very simply i did that for the reel but that's not really the point of this one. So because I've already got so much going on here, I don't really want to apply other masking and stuff like that on here. So I'm going to use compound clips. Now, one thing you could think when you wanted to mask something out, like the text, could be to use a mask and then mask out the text behind the subject. That doesn't really make sense to me. I used to do that beforehand, and maybe in something like Photoshop or Lightroom, I could take the text and kind of mask it out around where the subject was, but technology has gotten so much better since then. So what I make work most of the time that I feel like is the better choice is to mask out part of the image, the subject or the object in that one in front of the text, and then put it on top of the text layer so that we actually have the same clip playing twice on top of each other, but we only carved out a bit of the clip that we're putting on top of the text so that that's actually just in front. We're not doing anything to the text at all. We're actually just having that as a layer and then we apply part of the image on top. So let me show you again how we're doing that. So now we have our text layers and a set. We don't want to mask out any of the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two layers in the bottom. I'm going to drag them up and actually for the sake of this video, I am just going to these three clips and make them a bit shorter and the same thing on the other end. I will just make some of the process we're going to do in a minute a little bit faster and I'm going to do the same thing here just carve that out okay now we don't have as much going on we still now we can't see our text because it's hidden underneath layer 3 what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click my clip here compound clip let's just see walking shot mask for the sake of this video and the other one i'm going to do the same compound clip waterfall mask there we go all right, so if we head into our color grading tab now, you can see we have our compound clips here and they haven't got anything going on in the notes because it's now compounded into one, meaning that all our grades and everything is still in it, but we can't change anything because it's compounded. So still have our original clip here, but now this one is a new one and that makes it very easy to mask anything out. So let's just get a little bit more real estate here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use for the first technique here, I'm gonna use the magic mask. So I'm selecting the magic mask. You need the paid studio version of DaVinci Resolve to do this. Otherwise you can use the technique that we're gonna use for the second clip. So I'm just gonna draw on my subject here, the lines, click shift page to see what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna click better. Usually that gives us a little bit more. And now the camera is featured as well. That's pretty good. Just gonna render this out. So it's tracking all the way through seeing how that works. Now the camera disappeared again, but that's for our text now, it doesn't matter because the text is gonna be up here. Just gonna let that track and that's it. So now you can see we have this, but if we head back into our clip here, we still don't have it visible here. We still can't see the text. And that's because we have mastered out, but we haven't really done anything with it. And now this is a technique for color grading as well. We could just go in and now color grade this part and it wouldn't mess up with anything else. That's not what we're doing in this one. So I'm gonna right click here and click add alpha output. I'm gonna drag this blue output over to this line. And what that does is that now all we have in this layer is actually this clip here. So you can see if we hit in now and we hit video one, we actually just have the black screen, whatever we masked out here, and then now the text behind. So now we can see the text behind the clip. And if we play it through, you can see we're just walking in front of the text. 
So that's essentially how I put text behind a subject. Now another technique you can do if you don't have the studio version is that you can play around with the power windows and the qualifier, but that's a little bit more of a tricky thing and it doesn't really make the same result and not as fast, but it is a way to work around it if you don't have the page studio version. So I can definitely recommend still trying this out and using this. For this waterfall shot, it doesn't make sense to use the magic mask, but it doesn't definitely make sense to use the qualifier. So let me show you how I'm doing it. And then you can figure out whatever thing you wanna apply yourself. The magic mask does require a little bit more computer power. So if you don't have a strong computer, it can be a little bit dreadful to work with, I think. But to me, the magic mask itself has been almost just worth getting the studio version. So if you have a powerful computer, you should probably consider buying it. I'm not sponsored by DaVinci Resolve or Blackmagic Design at all, but yeah, you know, I just love the program. So let's head back in and see how we can work with this waterfall shot. All right, so for the waterfall shot, we're gonna do sort of the same thing, but we're not gonna use the magic mask. And I'm gonna show you why actually. So I'm just gonna mask out this thing and click Shift H. You can see we got a lot more blurred stuff like the blacks here, and I can use better. That will blur it out. And if I play it through, if we tracked it and I played it through, let me just do that real quick. You can already see now that the background here that it's masking in is moving around. And if you put that in front of the text, it will look very glitchy. So that doesn't really make sense to do. So I'm gonna remove that again. Now we don't have anything going on. I'm gonna head into the qualifier for this one. And I'm just gonna play with the luminance because the waterfall here is much brighter than the background. So I'm gonna drag up my luminance here. And now we can already see because we still have Shift H on, we can see what we're doing here. And I'm just gonna drag it in a little bit more. I think around something like this. Then I'm gonna soften it out and drag it in, make it a little bit more like so. And what we could do, because we still have something selected up here, is we could use a mask now and just sort of drag that in here. And now we only have something selected within this mask and our qualifier. I'm not gonna use any of the hue or the saturation here because that's just gonna have too many things going on and have a higher potential of something going wrong. So I'm just gonna use this one and just gonna dial it in a little bit. I'm gonna add some blur to it. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of denoise here. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, add alpha output, drag the blue line to the output, and there we go. Now we can see the text behind. But if you saw the reel in the beginning, you might think oh, it doesn't look exactly the same. We can see that it's completely covering it and it can look pretty good. I won't lie, like this looks okay, but I actually want it to be just a little bit better. So I'm gonna head into my inspector here on the clip, on the compound clip. I'm gonna go down to composite and I think I'm just gonna drag down my opacity to around 75%. That just makes so you can see a little bit more of the text, but it still looks like it's coming in front of the waterfall or behind the waterfall. Now it's just more visible and I think it actually looks even more like realistic than before. We could dial it down a little bit more, so maybe say 85% and see how that looks. And that is maybe even better. So that's how you can animate text behind a waterfall, like so. Works best with something that you have contrast with. If we were to try and do the same thing with this clip, it's gonna be a little bit more of a haggle. So I'm just gonna copy this one, hide this one here. Now we have our second compound clip here. I'm just gonna reset this node. And if I try to do the same thing, I could try and qualify out. So I could try with the luminance first. Let's see here, you can see it's selecting a lot more than what we want. We could try and use the mask here so we could start by doing something like this dragging it in here or we could make a custom mask but then it'll be moving and that will make it a little bit more difficult maybe soften it out a little bit at the clip so we can see what we're doing here and then we could go in and play around with our qualifier here so we could try and qualify out the green tones so just everything that is green top bottom here so now we can kind of see okay we are selecting everything that's not here and then we can invert it by clicking here and that helps us a little bit more but again you can see it's not perfect can play around with the black clean and the white cleans try and see if we can mask things out blur radios denoise something like that then we could add another node just make sure that this one goes on here and this one applies to the next one now we only see this part then we could try and qualify out this particular color that worked pretty well now we have a lot of saturation and stuff going on as well. I don't know if we click off the saturation and the luminance, then we're actually doing okay. Then invert it again. And now we remove some more and then you could play around with doing it like this. If it's for short clip, that could possibly work, but I'm not really recommending that way forward for putting moving subjects in front. It's just easier to do with the magic mask. But if you have something like a waterfall or something else, 
this can work really, really well. So that's the techniques that I use. It's not that it's not possible doing it this way, but you can see it requires some more finesse of doing it. So that's it for this very quick video on how you can put text behind subjects. I know it's not that easy if you use the free version. The second clip that we use, the waterfall clip, can be used completely in the free version. You don't need the studio version at all for that. All the tools are available. If you want to mask out a subject, it is more tricky as you can see. And you could just try and mask out the small part of the subject and then kind of finesse that around. I can try and make a video that is a bit more advanced on that part. If you want that, let me know down in the comments. But otherwise, I would recommend looking into getting the studio version if that's something that you think you're gonna use a lot. And honestly, there's a lot of features in the studio version as well. But as I've said in another video, the free version is more than capable of getting you far, far into your video editing. So this neat trick, it's easier with the studio version, but for some particular things like the waterfall shot, you can do all of it in the free version as well. So these are a few techniques that you can look at and hopefully that helps you to do something more creative with your videos and put text behind your subjects as well. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and until the next time, take care.